It's non-league day. It's the Jersey Bulls against Farnham Town. It's third against first. Well, today the town can crown themselves champions of the combined counties Southern Premier League. Any result better than Nat Hill in second would see this machine of Farnham win the title with 10 games to go. In the words of Star Trek, can the Bulls boldly go where no team has gone so far this season by taking a victory at home against Farnham? Well, we've been waiting for this game all week. The excitement has been building and finally match day is here. This stream for those watching and we hope there's plenty of you this afternoon is brought to you by GAM investments if you want to find more out about them go to gam.com big lineup here on this near side for Farnham with Meaton, Flatman, Waters and Dean looks more like a kickoff in American football when they go for the short one to get the ball back so let's see what's coming up now and we're underway here Challenge there by Barlow, Trotter picks it up, Trotter into the box. Back in towards Barlow, squares it into the middle. Well, may well be Kanane there, the skipper who just stops what would have been a simple tap in. Bickley just holding it up, got support from Kerry. Back inside again, Johnny LeCain, can he square it? He does, Nash down at his feet, then Bickley, and he scores! Well, the pressure has paid off for the Jersey Bulls. And it's Lorne Bickley with the opening goal. And the stand are on their feet here at Springfield. Well, the pressure had been coming. It had come with Kanane clearing it early on. This time, though, it falls to Bickley and he makes no mistake. He drills it past Nash. It's Jersey Bulls one. It's Farnham Town nil. And it's Lorne Bickley with his 23rd goal of the season. Back now to Giles. Plays it in, looking for the far post. Nash's mistake and he missed it. Well, again, the wind is causing problems there. Nash this time nearly caught out by it. Jackson again to Smith. Waters wants to bring it forward. Trotter's stolen it from him. Trotter now takes the ball on. Well, Trotter just probably needed to chip the keeper there. Very close to gifting the balls a second. And Waters just knocking it around at the back here. Trotter just steps forward. Trotter pressing again and Trotter battling a one wins it. Johnny LeCain on his outside. Trotter into the middle. Can he get a ball into the box? He does, it falls to Barlow who shoots. Well, the deflection falls nicely and in the end kindly into the arms of Nash but the ball's creating again and now Campbell with Giles outside him plays it down into the feet of Trotter pressure coming from Jackson but quick ball for Barlow to run in behind Meaton Barlow's there Meaton's with him Barlow looking for help here he's going to try and just hold it up for Giles who will whip it in falls now to Trotter with the shot Saved by Nash, good hands. And it is just a little bit static in the middle of the park from Farnham. As again a mistake. Bickley now, can Bickley get there first? Nash just gets enough on it in the end. And Kinane mops up. But you thought Bickley was going to out jump Nash there and just nod it over him. And it will be a Farnham free kick. And, and a happy seventh birthday to Austin Kinane goes Austin. forward. Waters to edge of the box. Ball comes forward. Well, it falls over and just cleared by Campbell. Gets over the oncoming rush. Shot from distance. It's Cooksley, the number eight, who takes the shot. Forward again. Bickley is the target. Bickley gets there. 
Now Barlow inside, trotters there, Barlow takes it on, Lecain makes the run, can Barlow play it through, he does, Lecain, he scores, it's 2-0! Well there's protestation coming from Farnham, looking at the assistant on the far side, his flag stays down, it's Jersey Bulls 2, it's Farnham Town 0, and for the second time this afternoon, everybody in the stand here at Springfield is off their feet. Well, it's not quite half time, but on 34 minutes, a beautiful bit of play in the middle there between Barlow and Lecane. And Lecane with his left foot makes no mistake. Pat Nash is beaten for the second time this afternoon. Jersey Bulls are rocking Springfield. Now Jackson to Meaton. Meaton does play it in first time. Little flicks it on, it falls now, but doesn't fall to the feet of Flatman who can't control it. Looks like it may well have just hit him. It's going to be a throw in. Meaton will take. And there's, well, it's Flatman who's gone down. And it looks like that may well have caught him in, well, uh, below the belt. Looks like he may well just be struggling for a little bit of breath there. The number 13, Lewis Flatman. Finding a little bit of flat from that one. Giles plays it forward. Campbell does well, it falls, the ball's in the net, it won't count. Campbell clashes Nash, and Nash has been caught there. It didn't look to be much more than just a fair challenge for the ball. Nash. Slightly shorter in stature than Campbell. Comes off the worst, as keepers often do when it's a 50-50 ball. They often also get the benefit of the doubt. And the fact the ball turned in by Watson won't count. Giles to Watson, gets it back. Nice skill from him. Wants to play it in, he does. He has Trotter again. Trotter tries to get the shot off, he does. Ooh, not that far past in the end as the crowd. Ooh, from them. And it's Giles and it's Kerre. And Jay Giles, you can sense Fancy's taking this on. The wall is ready. Giles or Kerry? It's Giles. He takes it far corner. Going over all the time. Not troubling Nash. He's able to watch it comfortably sail past. Flatman. Near post. Flicked on. Far post. Flicked away. Falls now to Dean. And it's somehow cleared this time. It looks like it's Luke Watson. The veteran in front of Roche who just turns it behind. It's going to be a corner. Bulls have to defend here. In it comes, far post, looking for Kinane, who gets the header on it, and Roche is there. Well, it, it looks like it may well have... Well, no. It looked for a second like Roche had gone behind the line as he caught the ball. But a free kick has been given. Farnham weren't celebrating. Foul on Piers Roche. Well, that's the closest they've definitely come, Farnham, in the whole of this game, to getting one back. And in the end, it's an infringement as the Farnham bench look to make more changes. And played across by Meaton. Jackson gets past Trotter, gets past him again. Still going forward. There's a clash in the middle between two of the Bulls players. It's fallen to Karoma. Karoma going, but Giles getting a touch. Karoma still going, ball comes in, blocked. Curtis gets there, Barlow defending backwards now. Gets the ball clear. There's Mark Waters, but now Cooksley. Lecane brings him down. Well, there's gonna be a yellow card for that, you'd think. Very late by Johnny Lecane. Management of Farnham urging the players forward. Cooksley again. McCain stands there, in it comes. Blocked somehow, well, and it's in. It's finally been smashed in. It looks like it might be Tanner, who somehow finds it through a crowd of players. It falls, it, everyone looks to stop for a second there, and it does come down. It's scrambled away in the first instance by Roche, but Tanner at the far post has drilled it in through a crowd of players. And there is a lifeline for Farnham Town all of a sudden. Five minutes to go here. Tense times. Cooksley with the corner. 
Bulls defending. Trotter there, heads it clear. Only as far as Karoma. Will Cooksey get a second chance? He tries to whip it in with his left. He does. Headed away by Kerre. Falls to Tanner. Well, he doesn't quite control it the first time. Does the second. Tanner now with LaRouge tail for company. Meaton. Still Farnham stay forward. In it comes. Roche should get there and he's missed it. Well, it's gone in. An absolute howler from Piers Roche. A complete mistake at the back by him. He couldn't have got it worse. He's come for it. He's completely missed it. And a cross that wasn't supposed to go anywhere near the ball's goal has dropped in. And it's all square here. Well, unbelievable scenes. Nothing from that ball in. And somehow Roche has had a howler. He will definitely not want to watch that one back. And now you feel Farnham will sense that there's blood in the water. Nash has it and clears it. Postance flicks it forward. Kerry just getting back on the right side of Edwards. He has Tanner outside him. Edwards trying to go through. LaRoustel picked up by Tanner. Plays it inside. And then just as Waters wants to take a shot, it looks like. Trotter takes it off him, it's inside, it's fallen to Cavallio. Is this some magic from the Magician? He's played a beautiful ball to Beatley. Beatley now into the box. Oh, and he hits a side netting. Well, the whole of the stand are on their feet again here. Great ball by Miguel Cavallio to pick out the run of Lorne Bickley. And in the end, Bickley, who normally scores when he shoots, doesn't find the target. He rattles the side netting. LaRouge tail, Watson, pressure coming. Bundled off it. Edwards gets there first. Sliding challenge by Curtis. Edwards does go down. Yellow card for Curtis. And today's man of the match has been chosen by Dan Investment. No rush here. There's no time left, it looks like. And that's it. It's all over today. As Harry Curtis is named as the player of the match by the main sponsors. Farnham are celebrating, he must know something about results elsewhere. Piers Roche is absolutely distraught in goal, who sits down on his haunches as the Bulls gift Farnham the goal that gets them back level after a very much one-sided game at times for the Bulls, who were so close to going boldly where no team has gone before this afternoon, but in the end, they couldn't quite pull it off. It still has been a hard-fought battle. Farnham will see it as a point gain and probably the championship. But they were in a hell of a fight this afternoon. They were rattled, they were challenged, and they were pushed by a really well-organized and drilled Jersey ball side. But in the end, it's not to be. Their unbeaten record stays intact. It finishes here at Springfield. Jersey Bulls 2, Farnham Town 2. Well, there'll be a short break, but if you stay around, we'll try and get something from Pitchside to get their views on this afternoon's performance. We've got the skipper of Farnham Town, the champions 23-24. How does it feel? Um, yeah, I was just saying, it's been a... I don't know, obviously, we're, without being moved, we've won it by a country mile, really, but... Today we were, to be credit to you boys, you, I thought first half especially we were a better team. Um, we weren't at it, I think there's a few walking wounded, a lot of games. Um, but yeah, um, it's a relief, obviously over the line, kick on, enjoy the rest of the season. Oh, obviously, <laughs> probably couldn't fall on a better weekend for us, obviously everyone's together. Fans have travelled over here. It was a great game, great occasion, non-league day, packed stand, fan zone, I don't know, top two off really, it's been an unreal season. but. Yeah, a few walking wounded and I think we're all relieved to just seal it, so. And you had, well, a tough game today. Probably yeah. the toughest of the season? Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. You know, two, we, had, we hadn't gone behind all season, not for a minute. And then suddenly we were there at half-time, 2-0 down. We, did, we knew if we got one, there's characters on our side. It's a big game, you drop off and, yeah, we've got a scruffy goal. Bit of luck for the second, but you need it over a course of a season. and. You know, we've been excellent. We weren't really at it today, but we just had to find a way. And credit to your boys, Ed. But yeah, I think they were knackered at the end. They put in a shift and they played really well. And obviously, all the best to you lot, you know, in the playoffs. And it'd be a tough game for anyone. So, Well done today. Go and Cheers. celebrate.
Champions, champions yeah, play. Cheers. cheers. Harry, well done today. Your champions, hard right. season and a tough game today. Tough, I mean, it was a tough game. We, we, we played you two weeks ago and it was tough. My voice is gone, I apologise. Uh, two weeks ago it was tough, three weeks ago. Um, you boys always put up a, a real challenge. Um, and off the pitch, you're a fantastic club and we, you know, it's... It's a pleasure for us to, to come here and have the fans together and two great sets of fans um, who do this league and non-league in general such a huge, huge um, positive look for what all the other clubs should, should be and um, should be looking to do. Um, but yeah, tough game, a game of moments. Keeper's not going to be pleased to watch that one back in the, uh, in the morning, but you know those things happen and when you're on a title challenge like we've been on this season sometimes luck goes your way and it felt like that today it felt like it was written in the stars we, we called it once we once we saw the fixture list six months ago we said oh that's around the sort of time that you know if we have a good run no, that'll be in the question that'll be fun never in my wildest dreams I think that it would be true but yeah to win the league with having only played 29 games to be unbeaten unbelievable and you talk about unbeaten, but for a moment today, did you think that might have gone? Absolutely. Absolutely. I thought, I thought you guys were fantastic. I thought Jersey were fantastic. They condensed the pitch, made it really difficult for us to play. I thought some of our key players were really bad for, for 45 minutes. It, just, it felt like they were, they were playing the occasion rather than the, um, than the match. And uh, I thought, you know, we've called them out and individually. Ryan, I thought, was poor at the back, lost the ball, Cooksley and, and, and Mark in the middle. We just didn't have any sort of dominance. We couldn't get past halfway line. And then, you know, again, momentum swings in football and, and those boys started to, you know, push on. Some really good substitutions came on and changed the game. Um, and, and everyone was galvanised and it felt, it felt inevitable. And I have to give a huge shout out to the Farnham fans. Travelled a long way. And uh, there's a lot of us here and uh, hopefully they enjoyed that moment and remember it for a long, long time. Well, I give a shout out to those that are watching at home as well. Yeah, I don't know how, the, how many people are watching online, but you know we would have pushed it hard. You guys do a great, great job online. Um, and uh, yeah, huge shout out to those guys as well. And it, it's, a, it's a testament, how many? Yeah, 800 people watching online. So like, it's a testament to how much can be done in non-league. You know, people go, oh, it's, it's about this, it's about that. But it's about community and building a story and a journey and a narrative. and. We're two clubs that are very good at that, and people should be looking at it and going, OK, maybe that's the way forward. Um, and, you know, it's a great, great occasion today. And look, we, we wish Jersey a huge amount of success in what is going to be an amazing playoff um, promotion push. And look, we hope to see you in step four next year. Well, it's non-league day, but it's your day. Well done today. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Well, there's Harry Hugo, chairman of Farnham Town, and that probably will be it from us today and with Farnham will greatly celebrate the league that they have pretty much run away with this season well thank you for watching it will be for the Bulls Red Hill next Saturday but for Farnham it has to be a night of celebration a night to remember in a season that they have been the dominant force and fair play to them we wish them well in step four thanks for watching we'll see you next time